Welcome back to the podcast that rocks, weekly podcast that talks about news in the world of rock, metal, alternative, and everything in between. With me again on a special edition because she was free this evening and didn't have class is Go Gretchen. Say hello, Gretchen. Hello, Gretchen. Oh, we missed the dad joke, didn't we, everyone? Mm. Everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I will be brief on this first part. We'll explain later after the podcast because the chat is blowing up right now. First of all, thank you for joining us on Twitch. This is now going forward going to have to be live streamed only on Twitch because Twitch has new policies where dual streaming to YouTube is a big no-no. And that sucks. However, we're going to work with it while we can. So for everyone who is watching right now and wondering why it's going to be on YouTube, we're going to put it right on YouTube after we stream it on Twitch as soon as we can download it. So no problem there. And if you're listening on the podcast forums, thank you very much for downloading and tuning in. Helps us out a ton. Also, we had an interesting weekend. Um, we have already had a lot of people in the chat commenting on this. Very briefly, in a sentence, Gretchen, would you like to explain what happened this weekend? In a, in a sentence? Mm -hmm. uh, Luke proposed to me. I did. <laughs> and I said yes. Yes. <laughs> so... I'm aware that's not music news, so we will save the proposal story for the end of the podcast because I know that's not what everyone came to listen to for the music stuff. So we will, I'll let Gretchen tell the story from her point of view and all that. That happened. So thank you guys very much for all the many, many, many well wishes, the congratulations. We got them across the board on every outlet. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> that, and we got them a lot. Our phones were blowing up all day Saturday when we were with our friends, Mike and Amanda. So it was great. So thank you very much for that. However, we have actual music news to discuss, and I'm aware that we have missed, not missed, but we have a lot of interesting things to cover. One of which is something that just happened this past Sunday on a very unique Halloween, because of course it was on Halloween, and we'll jump right into it. Limp Bizkit released their first new album in 10 years, titled Limp Bizkit Still Sucks. Now. Gretchen, what do you think of the album cover that I showed you and the name of that album? I mean, at least they own it. They, you know what? They are aware. Um, Everyone's commenting about how it's self-aware. And whether yeah. it's self-aware or not might be up for debate. Like, they might just be cashing in on that. And I'm fine with uh, that, though. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. You know why? Because I'm going to give... My very brief mini review, because I don't have time to do a full proper video review, and they released it on a Sunday, which makes it very harder, and I yeah. was out of town on Sunday in another time zone, so I couldn't even make things if I wanted to. So, first of all, Limp Bizkit Still Sucks is not being released on a physical medium, only on streaming services. Two, what I thought was interesting, not as many people are playing it on Spotify as I would have predicted, however, that could change tomorrow when numbers are updated. That means nothing right now. Number three... I did listen to it in full last night and this morning, all the way through, like just through all of it, because I wanted to be fair and give everyone my to like as unbiased opinion as possible, because people know my history with Limp Bizkit and what I think of Fred Durst. So first of all, it's the first new Limp Bizkit album in over 10 years. It is the best new Limp Bizkit album even longer than that. It is the better than their last three albums before it by a long shot. It's better than Gold Cobra and results by may, may, may vary by a long shot. It's better than Chocolate Starfish because I wasn't cringing at all the terrible jokes and lines and disgusting language and bad rhymes and stolen lifted material. Also, I want to point out the bass is amazing on this new album. Like really good bass. Like that was the, the highlight. And that's it. It's not a great album. It's not anything special. It's not even, it doesn't have singles you can really get into. It doesn't really have much. I was surprised the guitar work wasn't that anything special. Some of the riffs were just kind of there. West Borland didn't do anything for me on this one. That's a big hook for Limp Bizkit. And this time, eh, it was a lot of eh, fine. I am grading on a massive curve because it is Limp Bizkit. This album is a five or six out of 10 in my opinion. And that is a shock that they stepped it up. The weakest part is Fred Durst's writing is still bad. However, um, it's not nearly as bad as it was the previous few albums. Not even close. And there are some albums where he's just having fun and goofing off innocently and enjoying it. 
I will take 50-year-old dad Fred Durst over cringy, shock rock, disgusting Fred Durst any day of the week. So, my very brief review of Limp Biscuits Still Sucks, 5 or 6 out of 10. Mm. Is that is that fair? Uh, did I explain that well enough? Sure. Yeah. It doesn't make me want to go out and I listen a- to it. I asked. Yeah, exactly. I asked you mid coffee drink. I apologize. Um, oh, fun. It's. I would say that too. It's like I don't have any impulse or desire to listen to it again. And someone asked on Twitch, maybe the writing is purposely bad. I don't think any artist would intentionally do that with the intent to make music. Especially considering how much it actually does take to put out music. Like, why would you yeah. purposely do things bad? Uh, they would only hurt themselves, too, as it was almost completely self-produced and promoted. So, oh. yeah, I'm not sure that that... Uh, on, someone else just said on Twitch, it's definitely not an F. A D still means they failed a class. You know, a five or six out of ten, yeah, I get that. It's not anything special, but it's definitely not terrible. It's not, and I truly mean that. Mm-hmm. So take that for what it's worth. And again, well <laughs> take this as a sincere positive. I mean this. I will take Still Sucks over the last three albums and by a mile. So, Oof. yeah, take that for what it's and worth. Still, and still only coming out of five out of six out but, of ten. Yeah, exactly. Again, a six, a generous six, more realistic five. There has positives and negatives to it. They did try things on this one, though. You can tell they put an effort on some of the songs. So yes. take that for what it's worth, too. And I know there's a lot of diehard Limp Bizkit fans out there that are just praising this, trying to find every little nugget of positivity about it. Fine. I don't mind that, guys. I've done that for other bands, too. Keep in mind also, though, that it's just, it exists. It's fine. It's fine. So that being said, uh, someone just said, uh, because I'm showing the loud wire. Uh, so I can show the album cover for everyone, like Kid Rock's in the corner. Oh, I'll get to Kid Rock briefly in a little bit. Don't worry. Ugh. Oh, boy. I know. People know that's kind of coming, though. <laughs> Someone also just said in the chat, I think Beastie Boys were intentionally bad. No. Not a, not a chance. Get out of here with that. Barf. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Woof. Ugh. Woof. Woof. Buzz. That's what you like to say. Buzz, your girlfriend. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. Exactly. So... That being said, moving on, as that was a big thing, let me know on if you're listening on YouTube, let me know in the comments what you think of Still Sucks. Be honest, too. I'm curious to see what people think about it. I gave my fair thoughts on it, too. Gave it a fair shot. As we move on, though, we have some interesting news. Um, the best way to describe what happened is on Sunday, I think it was over this weekend. It might have been Saturday. I'm not sure. Kanye West, Marilyn Manson, and Justin Bieber walk into a church. Uh, 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 what? No. <laughs> I, I ask, do I do I need to set it up any better? <sighs> Marilyn Manson led a prayer. Oh. Um. Ah. Uh, yay! That he goes by now, Mr. Kanye West is wearing a mask. He's beyond losing his mind. Justin Bieber was there. Okay. And Marilyn Manson, I think, is deep. Deep in the legal accusation and um, bad boy situations that he's in. Uh, Marilyn Manson's really not going to get around that anytime soon, no matter how many fake prayers he gives. Mm -hmm. This was, even if Ye, Mr. Kanye West, might have seen this as a fun thing to do for his service that he had. Uh, Marilyn Manson took this as a publicity stunt, just like Justin Bieber. And that's 100% all this is. I get that this is technically news, music news, and since Marilyn Manson's involved, it does count qualify under the umbrella of the podcast that rocks. No, this is a stunt. Don't take anything out of this. Do not give credit that they're trying to do something other than just get goofy attention. Marilyn yeah. Manson has been exposed deeply by many people, and the FBI are still working on a laundry list of issues, so that's not going away anytime soon either. That was featured on... While we were at Disney World and Universal, this was after yeah. I proposed to Gretchen. I think it was that day. It was like, so did you see? Gretchen said, did you see this? And I'm like, I saw the headline about it, but I didn't click on it. And well, 
I'm going to show an image right now because it was all over Mr. Kanye West and other people's Instagram. Let me go over here so everyone can see with the class. But bam. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's head to toe in white. Like what? Like true gospel, Southern gospel mm-hmm. style. Um, and they're all wearing Mr. Uh, Marilyn Manson, Kanye West, and Justin Bieber wearing Croc boots. Black boots by Croc. Like Crocs. But they're boots. Oh, I miss that. The uh, p- picture I'm showing right now on screen, Gretchen and Fresh for you in just a second, is right there. Yeah. Um, they got a band Ooh. back there. I don't think they had all three of them collaborating, but this is cultish when you actually see the video camera and them all circling around and what they're setting up. This is straight up cultish in Kanye West's mind. Marilyn Manson probably thought it was a good stunt to get his name out there. Justin Bieber probably just thinks it's funny. So everyone's got a variety of feelings and thoughts from Ali in the uh, Twitch channel. Manson be looking like a broke storm sh- shadow. What are they doing? This is super creepy. Oh, here's a good comment. This is super creepy. Also, hi and congratulations. <laughs> boy, oh boy. What a way to get wish. Thank you, though. We do appreciate all the congratulations still coming in. Yeah, this culty McCult photo right now. Um, gross, gross, <laughs> the ring, I, and this is for something, guys. If you thought this was actually Kanye West trying to become spiritual and inspirational, notice yeah. the camera in the back and they're taking photos and the equipment. No, this is for something. All I, ye cult, the ye cult, the ye cult. Oh, no. Uh, I'm reminded about Heaven's Gate. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Okay. I say this now, I hope not for a collaboration of oh God. revelations proportions, if we're going to be all spiritual about this, apocalyptical storm that we do not want. Woof. <laughs> yeah. So what no. is, wait, what is this, a satanic ritual? I do that. Don't, bring, don't bring Satanism into this because... I well, Mar- uh, Marilyn Manson. Him. Marilyn Manson. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, he would be he like, well. Yeah, but he doesn't follow the actual Satanist um, no. commandments. Uh, if you actually look it up, um, their Satanism is a whole another can of worms. I do not want to get into on this podcast because this is about music. I apologize for bringing spiritualism in this right now. Woof. So, moving on. As we continue to go on for the string of new music that's definitely out there already, I think we are very excited to see uh, the news that Slipknot is going to be releasing new music in 2022. Gretchen and I are both big fans. Corey, Clown, some of the other band members have talked about they've been working on new music all year when they're not touring. There's a lot of cool stuff going on right now. I'm very excited about it. The way they're doing it might be interesting because now they've promoted online like in collaboration with potential NFT stuff on an NFT website, I should say, that there might be some cryptic Slipknot material out there leading to some more information. And NFTs are very unknown right now. If you ask Gretchen or I what an NFT is, yeah, that's probably not going to get the best response. So, that being said, we are hearing information that Slipknot has new information coming out right now. We are very excited to see this. Not Fest Roadshow just wrapped up, if I'm correct. This is like a marketplace for Slipknot NFTs that are being made right now. And after We Are Not Your Kind, which was my favorite album of 2019, I'm very excited to see what they have to do. The album roughly, was roughly 80% done, mixed, recorded, produced, everything, as of September. So, it's coming sooner than later. I'm very excited about that. I know Mm -hmm. Gretchen and I were kind of bummed we didn't get to see Slipknot this year with everything. Pandemic, tour, stuff like that. But we're hopeful to see them next year. Also, Gretchen is excited because Corey wished us congratulations. That is true. Yes. So, that was very nice. (laughs) So, that was something very nice to hear from everyone. Yes. I don't know how I feel about NFTs because um, more bands are looking into the NFTs al- as an album release, mm-hmm. like Kings of Leon did a couple months back. 
there's more bands looking into that releasing singles as an nft it's it's unnecessary but if it leads to more money that's translated directly to the musicians po- uh, pockets regardless mm-hmm. of currency and regardless of country i see the appeal there's a yeah. lot of potential problems now that we are aware of with nfts uh hackers and scammers are glorifying in nfts you can ask spectrum pulse all about that so it's going to be interesting how this plays out and also not everyone's going to benefit from nfts as hope i think the creators of these tokens originally thought we'll have more to see about that later though unfortunately also want to point out some other interesting news that i think is very exciting for 2022 Green Day announced a 2022 North American concert with Incubus and Jimmy Eat World. They'll be going on tour. I think that's a pretty good lineup. Oh, I missed that. Mm-hmm. It was just announced either today or yesterday, if I'm correct. I'm very excited about it. Tour dates, I, if I'm correct. Well, they'll be doing a show. It's not a tour, but they'll be doing a big show. Um, with headlining Green Day, Incubus 311, Jimmy Eat World, and many, many more across two days. It's pretty much Green Day headlining this big festival in Tampa, Florida. Um, Florida, I know. I know. We all think Florida for many, many reasons. However, I think it's pretty impressive. And this is pretty much a glorified baseball music festival. Innings Festival in Tampa, Florida. I'll share the screen so you guys can see the little graphic right here. It's kind of a cool thing because they're actually going to have famous Major League Baseball legends a lot like for meet and greets along with two days of music. Hmm. I think that's pretty cool. It's going to be at Raymond James stadium grounds, like on the grounds of the Rays, where the Rays play. I think that's pretty Mm -hmm. fun. These are big name bands too. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Green day, Incubus, 311, Jimmy Eat World, highly suspect. We are scientists, Wolf Alice, the Lumineers. Wow. I'm stuttering today because I haven't been doing this since a week. Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats, Goo Goo Dolls, OAR. So there's a definitely an alternative um, feel to a lot of all this. And I think it's a good mm-hmm. lineup, though, for something fun. So if you're in Florida and Tampa, that's a pretty cool little festival to go see, especially if you're a baseball fan. I would see like a name like Ozzy Smith, St. Louis legend in there. So that's kind of cool. Ray Lankford, also St. Louis legend. So as you can tell, mm-hmm. I always point out the St. Louis Cardinals players. Very fun thing. Green Day will probably most like, yeah, most likely be going on tour again in 2022 with this news. Will they have a new album? I can see that. And as we are joined by Chester, who just popped up for the video, if you're listening on the podcast forums, Chester, one of Gretchen's cats, has joined us. And <laughs> Chester must be a Green Day fan because he looks quite happy right now. Yes, very much so. So will we get another Green Day album in 2022? Maybe. I can actually see that happening because I do think the, I don't want to say backlash, maybe that's not the best word, but the disappointment for many Green Day Mm -hmm. fans over Father of All got to the band pretty quickly to the point where the band was not playing any Father of All songs on the Hella Mega Tour. Oh dear. Or many of the stops of Hella Mega Tour. I can't speak for every single one. That's Mm -hmm. saying something. Mm -hmm. So... Interesting how that's going to work out. Fallout Boy, still going to be working on new music as well. Weezer has, um, Rivers Cuomo said, there are many albums worth of material that Weezer is going to release in the future because he just endlessly wrote and recorded during quarantine. Take that for what it's worth. So, also a great comment on Twitch. After Father of All, I think the only way to go is up. You know, that's not a terrible way to look at it. It's not impossible for them to make Father of All Part 2. But I can see them making something different and trying to make something unique and stand out better than Father of All. So okay. if, I, if I never hear the song, Oh Yeah, again, I will be happy. Oh, you didn't like that one? I did bop. Not only did I not like it, it played everywhere. It was such a bop. Oh, did you really like it, Gretchen? I actually uh, don't remember it. Oh, uh, there you go. Chester didn't like it either. So there you go. No. Chester was not a fan. <laughs> Someone just said in the uh, Twitch chat, Weezer released five albums just in the length of this podcast. Oh. <laughs> Better get your review in. 
Uh, no, not a chance. Not a chance. I got other stuff coming up that people should be happy about. I got other stuff. So, moving on. This happened last week, and I did not bring it up last week because last week I had Spectrum Pulse on to address his nightmare situation with his YouTube channel and content, content creators in general dealing with YouTube and hackers on Google and YouTube in the first place. We got a bit of an update on who's on the side of Tommy Vexed, and as his numbers thin, we now made it very clear publicly that Ivan Moody, the Poet Laureate, Mr. Five Figure Death Punch, is not on the side of Tommy Vexed. To which I say kudos to, to-, to Ivan Moody. This was spawned out of a fan question when he was asked about if he's still friends with Tommy Vexed. And I will try to pull this and read it as I have to turn my head. Hopefully I can get this right. Ba-bam. As I pull the quote. The question was asked, am I still friendly with Tommy Vexed? Friendly, yes. Yes. Yes, friends. I'm not sure if we ever, if, I'm not sure if we ever were anymore. Listen, I'm not going to get far into it, but I don't understand people that believe half of what they say and say half what they believe. I just don't get where politics got so massively involved with the kid. I think he got a little taste of it and the love that comes with picking a side and in my opinion got stuck. And I've said this actually, that I wish he would just come out and say, listen, I messed up. And yes, I did clean that language up properly. The thing about it is, and if you want the truth, is that I've been friends with Doc Hoyle and John from Bad Wolves for almost 20 years. So for me, that relationship goes deeper. That whole collective, they're rad people. And so when I hear about one of them getting choked out over something really minor, no. I watch something on him on stage where he's just going off. You don't effing know, man. I'm just like, play a song. I play a effing song. This is where uh, Ivan Moody goes off the rails trying to write coherently. He's pretty much just saying, shut up and play. Now, first of all, he called Tommy Vex out on his garbage. Tommy Vex has a lot of garbage. I will not argue that. Number two, Ivan Moody is in the right on this one and calling it out. I do say it's interesting some of the points he made, though, where he's telling I, Tommy Vex to shut up and play, put in a song, play. However, I remember from 2015 to about 2017, Every Five Finger Death Punch show had a five-minute break so Ivan Moody could talk about TMZ, rumors, how bad things are, how everyone's making things up about him, terribly behavior. So Ivan Moody's an interesting one to do this now that he's come around to the other side of this. He's evolved since then. His behavior has been much better since then. It has. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And... It's interesting also because of Blue Ridge Rock Fest when Ivan Moody said F Joe Biden and got an F Joe Biden chant, which then led to an F Trump chant in Virginia. He's getting a little political himself. However, I can't stress enough that Ivan Moody, in his own rambling, <laughs> writing way, when you watch him write on Instagram, boy, oh boy, you have to kind of decode everything every now and then. So... Yeah, yeah, that's true. He likes hashtags and emojis a lot. And he likes hashtags and emojis in the middle of the paragraphs. And then he'll start rambling on again. He also likes to put emojis in the hashtags. Yeah, and that doesn't work. That does nothing. No. That's, <sighs> that breaks the hashtag as soon as you add a, something that's not a letter or a number. Any character, yeah. that breaks the hashtag. That starts a new one. So yeah. someone, someone should just let him know that tip. That'd be great. Um. It'll be interesting if Tommy Vex ever does fire back because from what I understand, he's under being he is under litigation, being sued. He has a lot of court cases coming up. He has other situations going on, trying to get his solo tour to make a dime, and it's not working well. And things are not looking great. He's been quiet again, especially with Bad Wolves' new album with their new singer, getting some positive praise and press. Lifelines by Bad Wolves is charting well. And everyone's enjoying the new stuff with the new singer who also is an amazing guitar player. And Tommy Vex is a good singer. Do not get it twisted. I have never said that Tommy Vex cannot sing. I'm saying he was brainwashed. We've been over this many times on the podcast. And I, now that we know he's violent to his band members, just like he was to other people, he's not worth keeping around. Bad Wolves will move on just fine like I said they would. So, that being said... It's interesting to see that Ivan Moody did publicly take the side. And even though I am not a fan of Ivan Moody as a person 
and what he did, I will call, I will give credit when I see it. Yeah, he did say the right things and was on the right side for calling that out. And he also made it clear that, hey, yeah, we were friendly enough. I've been friends with Doc and John for years and years and years. So, yeah. I believe that was John, right? Yeah, John. So, yeah. moving on from that, though, on a side tangent, Ivan Moody is a writer. He's also a poet, like I said. Gretchen's aware of that. Did you know that he's also a poet and he made his own bo- book called Dirty Poetry? I had a copy waiting for me on Monday. Hmm. What a great thing to come back to. I know. It, what, this is the worst engagement present I've ever heard in my life. Yikes. I couldn't get you anything better, you know. <laughs> wow, you worked fast. If you got proposed to on Friday night, ordered it and had it on my door waiting for me on Monday without me knowing. That's impressive. That so, would have been impressive. Yeah. Alas. However, for those of you interested, this is a fully illustrated book with Ivan Moody's poetry. Um, I'll go over the details much more tomorrow on the live stream. Please keep in mind the title of this, Dirty Poetry from the Contagiously Contorted and Quixotically Twisted Mind of Ivan L. Moody. With a creepy man, uh, I don't remember what the L stands for, but with a creepy man holding a sucker looking over a bassinet or a stroller carriage, whatever, and a little baby. I did thumb the book just a little to make sure there's no any extreme artwork, like showing nudity or too much violence, because there is violence. Um, Because for the live stream tomorrow, for everyone listening right now that's live, and for tomorrow when they download this, the live stream of me doing a classy, fancy reading of dirty poetry from Ivan Moody will be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, on the main YouTube channel. I'm going to make it as ridiculous as I can and get through as many poems as I can. I will read Super Chats at the end. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I thumb the pages and all I have to say is the first page I opened up to started with the line, puke and sawdust. I then closed the book and said, you know what? This is exactly what I need. I don't want to spoil anything. And for those wondering how can we see the artwork with the text, I'll have a webcam face down on the book so that way you can see the book while I'm reading it aloud to everyone. I will be dressed up for the occasion. I shall make it interactive, reading reading comments between poems and things like that as well. Please join us. I'll make send reminders. There's an actual event page on the main YouTube channel right now. Um, Gretchen might be able to join us for the second half after she gets done volunteering uh, with the kitty cat shelter. So... Mm -hmm. It'll be, yes, that's correct. Puke and sawdust is how the first line of one of the poems starts. That just makes me think of like, I don't know if you remember in school, mm-hmm. if a student ever like threw up. They oh, like, I was. I was that student. Like, mm-hmm. Shake whatever and it looked like sawdust, the puke so that it would. Mm-hmm. It dissolves so they can clean it up later. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you told me that I'm like, that was the first thing I imagined was me being in like middle school. Yes. Um. And like that happening and just seeing them spread that stuff about. Oh, and he hits it to what you'll be dressed up as. Oh, let me clarify. I'll be dressed up nice, like in a suit to make it classy. <laughs> I did, not dressed up as a somewhat char- a character. Um, He's going to be Ivan. No. Tattoos and all. Uh, <laughs> Shaved head and all. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll the bald yeah. cap and then drawn it with Sharpie. Yes. Um, also, I in fifth grade, I was sick all day. I went to the nurse six times, but they said, you're fine. Go back to class. On the way to the seventh trip with my fifth grade teacher, who was my favorite teacher ever, said, you do not look good. Let's go to the nurse. Oh, I threw up in that hallway on the way to the nurse. From one side of the hall all the way to the other. Was it projectile or did you just Yeah, it was project. No, it was projectile. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Like a sprinkler going in every direction. <laughs> I was sick all day. The worst part, as I was heaving and standing there, 10 seconds later, another class of fifth graders, the next door class, came back from music class and walked by and saw my work. Art. And they had to walk by. All the girls were holding their noses in disgust. I was ashamed. All the guys were laughing hysterically. Oh. I was that sick, though. Oh. And, oh, Mr. Jim, our awesome custodian, oh, he had a lot of sawdust he had to use. A lot. Oh. Ours always turned pink like Pepto-Bismol. I don't know if y'all's did. 
I think ours was just like it dissolved it into like a physical solid instantly. Yeah. Then again, I wasn't ours paying that much attention. Color. Then again, I wasn't paying attention that much because I they rushed me to the nurse after that. I had to like hop over it, you know, that type of thing. It was a lot. Um, and the nurse always believed everything I said from that point on. I don't feel well. Get him out. Yep, that's right. That is right. Oh. So. That's my little story with that. I'll gladly tell that. I don't mind telling the embarrassing stories when I'm really young or if it's not my fault. It's whatever. Who cares? But I'll tell that <laughs> one because the, it, it wouldn't have been so, I don't think it would have been as bad if the fall, the cla- the cherry on top, yeah. the other class walking by, trying to get yeah. to their class and seeing me of all the kids my same age. Yeah. That was pretty rough. So at that point, but again, at that point, I was like, I just want to go home, please. It was, and they were like, yeah. We'll get you home, pal. Don't you worry. Oh. So, that was that. I have to say, as I'll, sh- I'll share the screen too, just so you guys can see the Ivan Moody's uh, photo. Let me say this while he's reading his own book, because the book's been pretty much it got delayed a little bit, but then it yeah. got, but it's been produced for a while. I don't know what that was about, but uh, boy, oh boy, some of the artwork. I will say this right now is very impressive. It's unique. And I do like the idea of a fairly illustrated book with poetry to go with it. That's awesome. Mm. That is well done. Not a I thick like art style. Yes, it's very, exactly. It's so do not think I'm going to be ragging on everything from front to back. However, I am very aware that some of this poetry will have me busting out laughing because Gretchen and I read through a couple, like two or three months ago. Boy, mm. oh boy, this is the five finger death punch rage and whining. We've come to know from Ivan, and it's in poem form, and we'll have artwork. So that will be the live stream tomorrow, November 3rd, 8 p.m. Eastern, on the main YouTube channel. Woof. I, I don't know what else to call it, guys. I actually don't know what else to call it as. I'm, I don't even want to open the book right now because I don't want to tease anything. But mm-hmm. let me let me do this. Let me open the first page to show you the cover page of it. Da, 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 da. There's a lot of so say, a lot of people are saying that Luke or Luke, sorry, Ivan looks kind of snazzy in the photo. He does. He does. Oh, does. Where he's wearing the robe and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just it's something okay. simple, it's but good. there's a lot more illustrated stuff. A lot. Like this is fully some of this stuff so stupid. Like some of the pages, I won't even show it right now, are fully illustrated. So it's not just little images too. Mm-hmm. This is full stuff. So that being said. I shall be relaying all that information to you, the lucky viewer who is interested in Ivan Moody, the poet. Please join in for that. Um, I'll have super chats open also in case you want to share your Ivan Moody poem. And I'll read them aloud as well. If you have fun poems you want to share, I'll do that at the end of stream as well. Who did the art? That's a great question. Let me find out the art. It definitely wasn't Ivan. No, it was not. It was hired out artists that he knew. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Artwork by Blake Armstrong. Mm. So take that for what it's worth if you want to look it up. Good question. Fair. Yeah. Whatever he paid that illustrator was not nearly enough. Well, I hope he gets a big cut of everything sold, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. He, I'm sure he will. Because uh, I, don't, I don't think Ivan would be the type two. I don't see that either. Hold payment. You know, he may not be uh, the best person, but I don't think he'd do that. Yeah, I think he he's aware with the publishing and how the book, like that this is like a partnership type deal for what he's yeah. selling his name might be the draw but he needs more than just his name for something like this so i'm sure yeah. the artist probably got a big cut art's not well, that's bad why the art i was gonna say that's why the art is such it's a, a unique good thing. additive yeah. to it it's a unique just thing words agreed kind of like meh agreed like, to have the illustrations especially that a uh, weird different Yes. Style. Will it's go gonna be good, I think. It's also it. a dark artwork, like supposed to meant to be dark, sometimes violent. Yeah. So warning, there's like still images of ant like drawings of blood and stuff. So just take that yeah. for what it's worth. If it's too violent, I'll just pull it off camera if yeah. I see it. So again, I'm going to this blind. I don't know what to expect. I know Ivan has a potty mouth. I'll have to censor some of it as I'm reading it. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so we'll figure that out as it comes. Macabre. <sighs> I don't a little macabre. I don't know if it, it's a little, potentially in the ballpark. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah. So that's not a fair way to, or that is a fair way to look at it at least. So, yeesh, 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 yeesh. <laughs> Moving on. I do want to make a quick mention. I just put this on TikTok and Instagram. Twenty-two years ago today, the Rage Against the Machines, the Battle of Los Angeles came out. One of my all-time favorite albums. 
And it features Gorilla Radio, the song that specifically got me into rock and heavy music. When I first saw the music video and heard it on, like saw like saw Rage Kids Machine and heard the song, I'm like, whoa, what type of ra- what radio stations play this song specifically? And that's what did it. So I ever heard that song was on uh, Tony Hawk. Mm-hmm. The game. It's, that's the loading. It was. Yeah, Tony Hawk too. That's the like that yeah. song when you turn it on. And that's yep. where a lot of people got introduced to it too. It just it's so perfect for that also. Even though it has nothing to do, it's not a skateboarding song by any means. But still, it's just mm-hmm. so perfect for that high energy set style. And I love it. Yeah. I still love it. I have it on vinyl over there. It's great. It's just great. Yep. Moving on. We are going to cover, since we didn't do it last week, the Billboard's mainstream top three songs of the week. Every week we try to cover the top three songs on Billboard mainstream rock that are either blessing or plaguing the airwaves. Coming in at number three, Papa Roach with Kill the Noise. To which I say, not the worst, ki- not the worst Papa Roach song by a long shot. Yeah. So, whatever. Number two, finally falling from number one, is Wasteland by Seether. Finally. A while. I don't know how many weeks it's at number one, but it was there at number one for many weeks. It's only been on the chart since the album came out a year ago but it's on 15 weeks on the chart because this is like single number three or four it was on the charts way too long it's at number one way too long it's a seether song through and through yeah Ugh. and they all sound the same yeah uh, yeah this one which does. is not saying that seether is bad it's just no it's not the but same thing yeah yeah exactly so and coming in at number one their first week at number one and one of many number one songs the band has had on the mainstream rock chart, Hailstorm with Back from the Dead. Huh. We okay. know that new album is coming sooner than later. We don't know when exactly yet. We also know the tour with Evanescence, that co-headline tour, will be mm-hmm. starting soon, as in this month. Very cool. excited about that as well. I'm hoping I can photograph that. I don't know about photography if they'll even allow it with COVID protocol and things like that, as many tours are being very cautious. Um, if Amy Lee or Lizzie Hale got COVID from a tour, the boy, oh boy, that's going to wreck that tour. Yee. So we'll find out though. Very interesting about that. So that was a big share of our music news for the evening. There's a lot of other stuff coming up. That being said, along with the, Ivan Moody, Dirty Poetry, live stream tomorrow, which I, again, hope everyone joins in. Spread the word, share the link. Regretting the Past is coming in a couple weeks, like I promised. We will be having that. I've already started writing it today, reaching out to people to make the special. If you are unaware, if you missed the streams before, I've already said what it was. It's on Kid Rock's Cocky, his fifth studio album that is terrible. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Sold over 5 million copies. Sold much more than Tools Lateralis or... Rage Against the Machines, The Battle of Los Angeles. And it's terrible. It oh. features the smash summer hit picture that Gretchen loves featuring Sheryl Crow. Wow, I just... Uh, peep, okay, everyone listening on the podcast forums, as soon as I said that, Gretchen gave the biggest eye roll and stank face eye of anger I've seen in a song. while. I know you do. Oh, so much. You that- hate it more than me. Yeah. There are songs that like there are very few songs that actually infuriate me. Mm-hmm. I hate. Like I loathe that mm-hmm. song. I put your picture away. <laughs> <laughs> also, hate by the way, song. for 100 gift subs, I'll have Gretchen record her own version of that in that ter- in that tone. <laughs> You're going to need more than that. Okay, Get five that. and 500 gift subs. <laughs> We'll do that way. 500, though. <laughs> Starting at 500. Um, by the way, I have nothing against Cheryl Crow. Nothing. She's I have that than, song against her. Uh, I was, cause she's better than <laughs> that, guys. If, you're ju- if your basis of judging her as an artist is based on that song, that is, a, is. Tr- that is a true injustice and very unfair. Well, oh, well. <laughs> you don't care. I don't care. She, she no, crossed she, the line. There's no going she back. She chose to she do did. that collaboration. She That's did. her own damn fault. So that, you know what? I'm a judge. That is will. That was willful. She, no one forced her. That was a no. willful thing, and she made a lot of money doing it with him. Exactly. She did that all uh, on her own. <laughs> that was a technical summer song from Kid Rock, and uh, he's just. I, I bring. I'm going to bring this up in the video too. One of the points that all the Kid Rock diehards love to bring up. 
Kid Rock plays all his own instruments. He's average at best at all of them, guys. Does he play the kazoo? Is that what they mean by instruments? About as well as some of the other instruments. I mean, he plays guitar, bass, drums, keyboard, piano. He's not specifically great at any of them, guys. And he shows that on this album and all of his other music. And this cocky album, by the way, has a lot of rehashed old music that he's worked on plus new stuff. So it's that type of album. Mm. Which again, he's not the first artist to do that. But yeah, the album's bad. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. You'll find out more in a couple weeks. I don't have the exact I don't have the exact date um, lined up yet. However, expect it in like less in less than two weeks, guys. Less than two weeks. Also, I would like to say for all the Twitch um, viewers out there, and I'll show this on the YouTube fans. Riffage will be coming on Monday. We were going to have it last Monday. There was a bit of an issue with just uh, everything going on then. So this upcoming Monday. We will have riffage with Dom and Ilnej. Two hours of music video riffing shenanigans on Twitch. That'll be a lot of fun. It always is. Ilnej Garrett is a big music guy, big musician as well. It's fun to have Dom come in on these asking questions about music and what he sees in some weird music videos. So it's always a good time with that stuff. Please join us for that. There'll be other videos coming on YouTube as well this month. All fun stuff, exciting stuff I'm going to make. Keep in mind, I also will be spoiling this a little bit. I'll make the announcement tomorrow. Rock Coliseum will be coming this month. I'll make the official date announcement tomorrow, but get excited if you're a Rock Coliseum fan. John, Mark, Crash, and myself will be having a standard Rock Coliseum this November on the main YouTube channel. Other than that, we'll have many other videos coming up. And until then, I think it's time for Gretchen to share the story of how she was proposed to. And where I blacked out and don't remember what you said at all. I know. And that's hilarious to me. Uh, There's a lot of funny things about this to me from my (laughs) point of view. Yeah, I know. Oh, you laughed later. But still, I think it's fair since this is Gretchen's story. Gretchen. It's your story too. It is. I know it is. But people want to hear from the the lady's perspective mostly. Okay. I'll try and keep it condensed then. So. Went to Disney this yes. last weekend. It was a long weekend. We got there Thursday, left yesterday. Um, Luke had been saying how he wanted to have a fancy dinner. And I thought nothing of it because the last time we went to Disney, we had a fancy dinner. Or at least I thought fancy. We dressed up. Um, so I thought nothing of it. And I'm, t- I'm trying to remember the, the string of events. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I'm completely oblivious. We go to dinner. It's at um, the Dolphin resort at a restaurant called blue zoo really nice place yes um we so we get there and they take us to this back corner yes booth slash table it was it was one of those ones um that was like booth and chairs and it sat like at least eight people correct but they put two of us there and so I'm sitting there going, like, that's weird. Like, why don't they want us out here? But then I was like, all right, well, there's, there's not too many people here. So maybe they were just like, eh, they look nice. Let's put them back there. So I sat on uh, the, the booth side. Luke sat in the chair side. And he kept trying to get me to sit next to him. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't, I don't want to be that couple that sits next to each other. You know, whatever. Let's sit across from each other and look at each other. And to little did I realize what his plan was. And so uh, we're sitting there, you know, we, we get dinner and everything like that. And <laughs> when it came time for des- I'm skipping a whole bunch of other stuff. But when it came time for dessert, um, we got the menu. And there are a bunch of things on there. And there was one dessert that really stuck out to me. But Luke kept insisting on these two desserts, which was a molten lava cake and like, what was it? Strawberry shortcake. Sh- shortcake. Yeah. And he kept insisting on them. The one I was interested in was like a s'mores dessert. But he was very insistent on the other two. So I was like, all right, fine. Let's go with the, the molten lava cake to split because the day before was National Chocolate Day. And I was like, we didn't get to celebrate. So let's go for that then. So then at that time, since we were split into the, a dessert, I did scoot over so that I was next to him. Um, so that would just be easier and less of a mess. 
I'm still completely oblivious at this point. And they bring the dessert out. And the only thing that was weird up until that point was a bunch of other, like, staff were following our waiter who had the dessert. I was like, that's, I'm, I'm like, literally my first thought was, did Luke tell them it was my birthday? And this is like some sort of joke. And they're about to sing happy birthday to us. Uh, no. So we get the dessert in front of us. And it spells out, will you marry me uh, in chocolate? Um, and my words to Luke were, are you serious? To which now everyone makes fun of me because they're like, no, 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 it's just a big joke. Um, to interject, at that point, it wasn't just, are you serious? It was, are you serious? I don't remember how I said it at this point. This was, this was the part where I, I pretty much blacked out because I don't remember anything Luke said. Um, I remember him getting down on one knee, like next to me. Um, I do remember sobbing, not just crying, but sobbing. Um, and Luke having to hold me at one point because I'm like, <laughs> just like uncontrollable sobs. Um, I know I said yes. Uh, and then we like embraced and all that. And in the distance, I heard someone say, oh, my God, they just got engaged. And then the next thing I know, I think this is what snapped me back was the entire restaurant erupted into applause. So, yeah. That's the proposal. That I remember. <laughs> yes. I did not give a long speech when I proposed to her. I'm not that type of guy to give long speeches when I can help it. I said a few key things. And I think it's great that Gretchen doesn't remember them. That's awesome. I think that's hilarious. Let's see what he said. No, no. <laughs> I, what the heck? I was, well, you know one of them said. It was like three lines. And the last line was, will you marry me? Yeah. I, I would like to point out also, the, I reached out to the restaurant a week ahead of time to see if I could set something up. The restaurant went out of their way. They gave us that back table and she didn't realize why would they give us this back? Because no one else was even sitting around us. This was a very nice table on a Friday, a very nice restaurant on a Friday night. People are dressed up also on the restaurant as well. That type of classy restaurant at uh, Disney. And also when she sat on that booth, if I didn't get her to move next to me for dessert, I would have had to like climb on the table or ask her to come out. And then I know that it would have been real awkward. So, and the whole writing on there, I asked her to marry me in chocolate, which I felt was appropriate and a smart way to do it. And one final thing I would like to point out, everything went well. I did have to hold her and console her, but I got two high fives from the staff after it was done. It was great. Oh. Loud cheering. Then I told Gretchen, you need to call your mom. I know you want to call your mom. And Gretchen goes, I, 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 could, I guess I could call. But she was still very shaken up. Happy, but still very shaken up, still crying. We were sitting next to each other on the booth at that point, eating dessert, taking pictures. The staff was taking pictures of us, like that first mm -hmm. picture. The picture I'm showing right now is of the ring. It's a little bit loose. We got to get it resized, but that's easy. And Gretchen has it on now. And... <laughs> I then told Gretchen, your mom is expecting a call right now. To which Gretchen said, she knew, which mm -hmm. I informed her. Oh, I, I told her I was doing this back in 4th of July. Uh-huh. I uh -huh. told mom, I had the ring for over a month back in September when I finally got it. The last time Gretchen came to see me, I already had the ring. It was in my house when she came to visit. Everything was very well prepared. I knew I was going to do this at Disney World. I wanted to make it a special place and special event. What do you want me to do? Do it while we're watching Squid Game? No. Oh, romantic. I know. <laughs> Everything was planned and prepared. I was not nervous the entire time, except for the last two minutes, waiting for that dessert, because it took a little longer than expected. That was the only time I was like looking over, like, where is it? Come on, where is it? That was it. But I wasn't nervous about anything else. And I'm very happy of how it went out. And it was the outpouring of congratulations and well-wishing. It was great. We really do appreciate it. I'm glad Gretchen was able to tell the story and be on the podcast tonight just for this. This is not music-related at all, I know. However, I did want to say it this anyway. And thank you very much for everyone for tuning in on that one. 
got to wear these. We also got to wear our happily ever after buttons. So that way people at Disney <laughs> knew we were celebrating something special. It was very nice. <laughs> we were probably going to try to stay at the, the next time we ever do go to Disney, whenever that might, it might not be for a while. It may not be next year, just with how things are playing out, unless something great happens. Um, we'll probably stay at that Dolphin Hotel because that was one of the nice hotels I've ever seen in my life. Yes. It, it, it's Amazing. not even, it's Dolphin Hotel at Disney World. It's Swan and Dolphin. They're like their sister hotels connected to each other. You stay at mm -hmm. Swan, you stay at the Dolphin, but oh my gosh, it was amazing, guys. So that yeah. being said, we had a lot of good stuff. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Gretchen will have a video on Thursday, if I'm correct. She yes. will be, she will have a vlog also of the weekend. And some of that will include footage and pictures of Disney and Universal and some of the engagement stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to see that, you can check out Gretchen's channel, Go Gretchen on YouTube. Please, please, please tune in tomorrow for the Ivan Moody's Dirty Poetry live stream. It'll be a lot of fun. This is something you want to be there live with to interact with the, ch the chat, see the live reactions, things like that. That being said, Gretchen, it's been a while, but I always ask, is there any words of wisdom you would like to end with? Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, do your civic duty and go vote, because that's what we did today here in Virginia, but um, polls are closed now, so like, I mean, I guess it's still counts like you should always do your civic duty if you're but also, you know. absolutely just always vote guys don't think don't your vote doesn't vote. matter last few elections have really proven your vote matters so yeah keep that in mind yeah so that's why i was able to be on podcast was because classes were canceled because of election day mm -hmm. so do your civic duty if you're able to and also continue to wash your hands because i saw a lot of nasty people at disney this past weekend Universal had them. Disney wasn't terrible. Yeah. Universal was rough. Universal was bad. So, so wash again, your hands, use hand sanitizer, stay away. Stay, yeah. <laughs> not through the, we're not over all the pandemic yet, guys. Keep it up, but still. Thank you guys again. We will see you next week and we'll see you tomorrow on the YouTube channel. Check out Gretchen's videos as well. Thank you all as we fade away. I will send a raid on Twitch. Please, please, please stay tuned. I'm going to send a quick raid to someone right now. Thank you guys again. We'll see you next time. Bye.